Boy, been a while since I did a Godzilla movie, hasn't it? I guess when there isn't a ninja at my window threatening to cut my nuts off, it kind of takes away some of the urgency. Anyway, I figured I better do one before the end of the year, so where was I? Holy crap, do you know what this means? This is the last Godzilla movie of this particular series. Hey, at least I made it to the end of one of them, right? Well, it's been a long time coming, but we finally made it to the end of the Heisei Godzilla series that started with Godzilla 1985, and successfully brought Godzilla back to his destructive roots after several goofy movies in the 70s. But rather than simply halting production for a few years like they did with the original Godzilla series, Toho instead made the then-controversial move of actually killing Godzilla off. I mean, yeah, okay, sure, Godzilla died at the end of the first movie, but this was the first time Godzilla died after being built up over a series of several films. Younger people may not remember it, but this was kind of a big deal at the time. I can actually remember the news talking about it when I was a kid. And keep in mind, other than Godzilla 1985, none of the Heisei films have been released in North America yet. Godzilla's final fight will be a memorable one, May Lee reports. Then again, it was the 90s, and people like to talk about famous pop culture icons dying. Anybody remember the death of Superman? That was a pretty big deal, too. So in 1995, Toho decided to give Godzilla his send-off with Godzilla vs. Destroyer. Or Godzilla vs. destroy a -ah. Oh yeah, that's another thing. When I first heard about this movie, people referred to it as Godzilla vs. Destroyer in North America, since that's basically the translation of the Japanese title. But since it's gotten officially released here, it's been called Godzilla vs. destroy a -uh, even though everyone in the English dub says Destroyer. Destroyer. Destroyer? Get the Destroyer to fight Godzilla? Destroyer has mutated. Well, I guess it's like the whole Ghidra Ghidorah debate. Either way, I'm sure somebody in the comments will say I'm not pronouncing it right. As if to really drive home that this is the last film in the Heisei series, the movie opens with Miki Sagusa discovering that Godzilla's island has sank into the ocean and both Godzilla and his son are nowhere to be found. Damn, that was quick. I thought they'd at least wait until the end to kill him. Just kidding, Godzilla's alive. Although he does seem to be suffering from a nuclear case of heartburn. What is that? Oh, oh my god, it's a monster! Look, dude, you're in a Godzilla movie. What'd you expect? I think the real reason they're surprised is because Godzilla's attacking Hong Kong this time. Oh uh, hey, why should Tokyo always be the place that gets destroyed? Now that he's in Hong Kong, I wonder if Godzilla will run into Mighty Peking Man. Hell, I'd even take a crossover with this guy from Inframan. Hopefully the members of G-Force can figure out what the hell is going on with Godzilla. I'm Miro Ozawa reporting, sir, U.S. Special Agent. Oh yeah? Well, if you're American, how come your lips don't match your dialogue? So if you're wondering why Godzilla looks like he swallowed a radioactive ghost pepper, turns out his heart is literally melting down like a nuclear reactor because of the energy he absorbed from the explosion that destroyed his island. Well, Godzilla started as a metaphor for nuclear weapons. I guess they could also make him a metaphor for nuclear energy. And this was made 16 years before Fukushima. This theory about Godzilla was put forth by college student Kenkichi Yamane, who's the grandson of Dr. Yamane from the first Godzilla movie. Oh yeah, this does exist in the same continuity as the original Godzilla, doesn't it? I kind of forgot about that once Raymond Burr left after his check cleared. Ken offers to work with G-Force, but enough of that, we gotta learn about the wonders of micro-oxygen. We can construct smaller and lighter oxygen tanks for divers. And if we feed micro-oxygen to fish, they'll grow much bigger than normally fed fish. So therefore, micro-oxygen could solve our food problems. No, making fish bigger isn't gonna solve world hunger, you're just gonna make more monsters! Of course, micro-oxygen also has some other uses. Well, I'd heard reports that it could be used in making weapons. Any weapon made this way would be extremely effective. However, I don't think anybody in this day and age would want to risk provoking a global war. Yeah, I mean, why would any government want a weapon that could turn them into a global superpower when they can just use it to make fish bigger? Seriously, no one thought this could be used as a weapon? That's like the people who invented drones going, No, 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 we're just gonna use them to deliver packages, we swear. By the way, if micro-oxygen sounds similar to the oxygen destroyer that killed the original Godzilla, there's a reason for that. He said that if it was ever used as a weapon, It'd be far worse than any nuclear weapon. So the doctor destroyed his research papers. You know, in hindsight, it might have been a good idea to keep an oxygen destroyer around to take care of your frequent giant monster problem. 
Or do you just like having to completely rebuild Tokyo every three months? I also gotta say, Japan has some weird standards when it comes to their military. Several characters don't want micro-oxygen to be used as a weapon. Oh, but a giant robot dinosaur made with future technology? Yeah, that's cool. We can totally build one of those. Turns out they might not need that, though, since Godzilla seems like he's about to go critical. So what'll happen now? Godzilla will increase in power, and finally... He will explode. Okay, so that takes care of your Godzilla problem. What's the downside? According to our calculations, the planet's atmosphere will heat up and then explode, vaporizing everything we know. Oh. Okay, yeah, that does sound pretty bad. So, yeah, if they don't find a way to stop Godzilla from melting down, it'll cause an explosion that'll destroy the world. And I could be mistaken, but I think this is also how Akira started. Fortunately, Ken has an idea. There's only one solution. We must kill him the way we killed the first Godzilla. You can't- Hey, Miki, did you not hear the part about the world getting destroyed if he blows up? Sorry, but your giant monster boyfriend has to die. They plan on using the Oxygen Destroyer to kill Godzilla, but since that doesn't exist anymore, they'll have to use the Micro-Oxygen technology that was totally just gonna be used to make giant sushi before this. However, not everyone's on board with this idea. Even if you make one, are you sure it'll be properly used? But Auntie, this time the Earth is in danger. But still, I don't like it, Ken. Don't do it. Okay, look, you don't want the Oxygen Destroyer used for destructive purposes, right? Well, what's gonna happen if they don't use it on Godzilla? The planet's atmosphere will heat up and then explode, vaporizing everything we know. That sounds pretty destructive! Speaking of which, here's another connection to the original movie. Some construction workers building a tunnel on the site where the original Godzilla was killed discovered the soil has been contaminated by the Oxygen Destroyer, but I'm sure there won't be any side effects. Signs of life? Bad news, fellas. This soil has a heartbeat. And if this movie had a dirt kaiju, that wouldn't be the weirdest monster Japan's ever thought of. Okay, that's not quite what's going on. But it's discovered that not only did the Oxygen Destroyer awaken and mutate some prehistoric organisms that were in the soil, but these guys didn't notice them escape. Now they could be anywhere. <laughs> uh, why is that guy humming singing in the rain? Is he gonna try and rape those fish? Alright, all joking aside, since Godzilla was a prehistoric creature awoken and mutated by nuclear weapons, making his foe in this movie a monster awoken and mutated by the weapon used to kill him is actually a clever way to end the series by calling back to the original film. Now that it's escaped, time to find out just what the hell we're dealing with here. Hold it there. And zoom in. Well, there's your explanation. Clearly a monster from the Super Nintendo game tie-in is responsible. You know, I can joke all I want, but Japan's technology for analyzing VHS tapes in the 90s was really advanced. The thing you were afraid of has already come true, in fact. Micro-oxygen has already been unleashed. Okay, I know you want us to take this seriously, but it is really hard to make micro-oxygen sound threatening. I got even more bad news. Godzilla's still melting down and turning the ocean into a giant hot tub. It's quite obvious he's heading this way. Yes, but why is he heading this way, General? You're wondering why Godzilla's headed towards Japan? Meanwhile, Miki decides to go looking for Godzilla's son, because come on, she's been in six of these movies. We gotta give her something to do here. Oh, Jesus, now what's going on? God, I knew it was a bad idea to let H.R. Giger open a red lobster in Tokyo. Here's another thing I like about this movie. Having Godzilla's enemies start out as multiple smaller monsters was a good way to add some variety by having them interact with humans first before duking it out with Godzilla. Not to mention this whole sequence with special forces looking for him in a building plays out more like a horror movie than a typical Godzilla flick. Oh, and uh, judging by their guns, I think this part may have been inspired by aliens. <laughs> Good lord, it's like they're getting attacked by Godzilla's crab lice. Although I think Godzilla 1985 might have already had that. So here's our first good look at Destroya, or Destroyer, or whatever. And I do like that they tried to break away from the typical guy in a suit design and went for a weirder looking monster, which is something the series hadn't really tried since Godzilla vs. Biollante. I know I joked about H.R. Giger earlier, but this really does look like a Japanese version of something you'd think up. You must stop the shooting. Hey, fuck you, pal. These things are dangerous, and we need an action sequence here. You know, even though this is a Godzilla film, I actually wouldn't mind a whole movie about these things. In order to make sure this part is really like a horror movie, this woman's car even refuses to start. And I know I already referenced aliens, but... Because it's Japan, instead of acid, these things probably bleed rainbows that melt people's faces or some shit. 
Meanwhile, I think Godzilla's busy trying to find a Tums factory to cool his tummy. Because they don't have an oxygen destroyer ready, the military decides to send in a new weapon called the Super X-3. Or Super Triple X, I guess. Hmm, you know what? This thing kinda reminds me of the plane from Gunhead. Alright, to be fair, this movie is way better than that one. And hey look, the pilot from Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 is back. Even though he's actually supposed to be playing a character from Godzilla vs. Biolanti, so that's a little confusing. Anyway, the plan is to use the Super X-3 to try and freeze Godzilla to try and neutralize his meltdown. And once again, considering they're so against the Oxygen Destroyer being used as a weapon, Japan sure does love making awesome weapons. Now if you remember the previous movie, the first Super X was an extremely effective weapon that nearly killed Godzilla, and only a freak accident with a nuclear missile brought him back. The second Super X was supposedly an improvement on the first one, even though it wasn't nearly as effective and just seemed to piss Godzilla off. The Super X-3 is supposed to be yet another improvement, which means it'll probably just explode as soon as Godzilla looks at it. Alright, let's see what the Super X-3 can do. <laughs> Holy crap, it worked! They made an improvement that's actually an improvement! I hope he stays underwater. Otherwise, we're in trouble. I mean, you could say that about pretty much any Godzilla movie. G-Force also finds out that freezing could be used on the Destroya monsters, so I guess this weakness explains why giant monsters don't attack Canada more. Oh, hey, Miki, I forgot you were in this movie. Uh, what were you doing again? That my powers have been fading for a while now. I really don't know if I'll even be able to find the little one. Look, so far the movie's been fine without him. Don't worry about it, Miki. Eventually she does find him, though. And hey, what do you know, he's actually starting to look like his dad. I guess he got over his cutesy phase once radioactive puberty hit. We also learn Godzilla is trying to find Junior, who apparently ran away from home after it exploded. Well, I can't say I blame him, as we all know Godzilla can be a pretty abusive father, especially after he gets a few thousand bottles of bourbon in him. There's a problem, though. Despite getting frozen earlier, Godzilla's still going to explode. But on the bright side, this could lead to a cool Japanese post-apocalyptic movie. So what'll happen? A meltdown. Meltdown? Mmm, the soap opera organ is how you know things are really getting serious. Meanwhile, the military prepares to take on the Destroya monsters, and once again, I totally understand Japan not wanting the Oxygen Destroyer to be used as a weapon. I mean, just look at how much Japan hates weapons! There is no place for destructive weapons in this country, goddammit! ULT laser guns, fire now! I know I already mentioned wanting a whole movie about the small Destroyer monsters, but this part looks like it could also be a pretty fun video game, too. Shame there wasn't an N64 tie-in to go with the movie. I will admit, though, this does contain one of the biggest special effects fails of the entire Heisei series. Jesus, it looks like a game of kaiju electric football. Unfortunately for the military, Destroyer's got a few more tricks up his sleeve. This is incredible! The creatures seem to have combined to form one big giant monster. Yeah, that's right. In Japan, that shit ain't just for robots. Destroy is like some weird, twisted nightmare Voltron. Not only that, but I think he might be a Transformer, too. This is another thing I like about Destroya. In addition to starting as multiple smaller creatures, giving the giant Destroya multiple forms was a clever way to add variety without using several different monsters. It also drives home just how much of a threat he is. It's kind of similar to what Toho did with Hedera, except... You know, destroy it doesn't get his own acid rock theme song. It can destroy everything. Its power is that awesome. Destroyer. Destroyer? Hey, it's Destroy Uh. Didn't you guys see the title screen? Godzilla and Destroyer. Alright, fine, it's Destroyer. And Godzilla, apparently. Now that G-Force knows Destroyer was created from the Oxygen Destroyer, that gives him an idea of how to deal with Godzilla's meltdown. That only that monster can stop the meltdown. You mean get the Destroyer to fight Godzilla? I'm telling you now, it's the only way, sir. Yes, having Godzilla and Destroyer fight is the only way to save the world. Or possibly completely destroy it. It could go either way. Yes, but... Just how are we gonna get them to fight each other? Yeah, don't worry, it's a kaiju movie. I'm pretty sure that's gonna happen regardless. That's like asking how are we gonna get these porn actors to fuck each other. They plan to use Junior to lure Godzilla to destroy her, but not everyone's on board with this plan. You can't use the little one as a decoy. Whatever your feelings, stopping Godzilla's meltdown is our priority. 
why does Miki look like she's pregnant with Godzilla Jr.'s kid and is trying to figure out the best way to tell everybody about it? In any case, they better get Jr. to Tokyo quick. Destroy is so powerful he can cause buildings to explode just by flying over them. And no need to worry, Miki. Jr. looks almost the same as his dad. Maybe he's just as tough. Well, Junior turned out to be a real dud. God, no wonder your dad beat you. Alright, Junior does put up more of a fight than that. I mean, come on, he may not be his dad, but he's a hell of a lot tougher than Minya. Unfortunately, he's still no match for Destroy no matter what form he takes. I would say he looks like a scary Japanese monster crab, but Japan already has those. Oh well, at least they got to do this gag again. You've got crabs, ass face! And if anyone still doubts just how badass Destroy is... Damn, did you see that? I think Destroya just tried to rip Junior's heart out. If other kaiju have special moves, Destroy is the first one to have fatalities. Get over here! Destroyer is sucking energy from Junior. He's inserting micro-oxygen molecules in- I think Junior's gonna need some oxygen now that he has a gaping hole in one of his lungs. I might have to give him more credit, though. Junior's pretty tough considering you should be able to see the actor inside the suit after that chest wound. Don't worry, son. I'm coming to rescue you. First, though, I gotta find some Pepto-Bismol. It feels like I'm about to shit fire out of my ass. Literally. Now, Destroy has had several different forms so far, but now that Godzilla's made it to Tokyo, that means we get to see his final boss monster form. Yeah, it's about time we got a kaiju version of the demon from Fantasia. It's been pointed out that Destroy's final form has a resemblance to the devil, and considering he was spawned from the weapon that killed the original Godzilla and is in many ways another allegory for the harmful potential of weapons of mass destruction, I guess it's only fitting that Godzilla's last foe of this series is a kaiju version of the Antichrist. Allegory or not, Destroy is pretty badass, even if it does kind of look like he has an anus on his chest. I think we better get out of here. Yeah, no shit! With Godzilla still melting down, G-Force decides to send out the Super X-3 to freeze him at just the right moment to prevent him from going critical. Alright, let's go freeze that overgrown lizard. This is gonna make my day. Mmm, spoken with all the excitement of somebody who just realized it's his turn to wash the dishes. Instead of using the Super X-3 on Godzilla, they might need to help him out. Not only does Destroya manage to take out Godzilla, but he also nearly kills Junior. <laughs> Why couldn't a monster have done that to Minya in a movie? Or at least a Kenny? I've said it before and I'll say it again. No one abuses Godzilla's kids but him. Destroy is gonna pay for this. Okay, maybe not. I have a feeling this is gonna be Godzilla's last fight. Eh, just give him a few years, he'll be back. Damn, I think Destroy is the first monster since Biolanti to actually make Godzilla look small. And he's also one of the only ones to make him look like a bitch. To make matters even worse, Godzilla's still got a fever and the only prescription is the total destruction of Earth. As you would imagine for Godzilla's last movie, this final battle is one of the most brutal of the entire series. There's parts that almost get as gory as a Gamera movie. Uh, look, I know you said having these two fight was the only way to prevent the end of the world somehow, but I think they might end up causing it if they keep going. Better send in the Super X-3. And here's a way this movie subverts your expectations. Godzilla's not the one who kills Destroya. Instead, the army comes in and blasts him with a bunch of freezing rays until he explodes. Wow, I think this is one of the only times in a kaiju movie where the Japanese army was actually effective. They also used the freeze weapons on Godzilla, but considering he was gonna die anyway, I'm not giving him that one. Believe it or not, the scene where Godzilla finally disintegrates is actually kinda touching, even if it does contain some dated CGI. Out of all the souls I've ever known, his was the most... kaiju. Well, Godzilla may be dead, but his legacy lives on. And by legacy, I mean his possibly illegitimate son. That's right, Junior is now the new Godzilla, a plot development that would not be followed up on.
Despite the controversy surrounding the decision to kill Godzilla off, this proved to be a smart move for Toho, since Godzilla vs. Destroy went on to become the second highest grossing film in the Heisei series, and many fans also consider it to be one of the best Godzilla films, and for good reason. Because the Heisei series had a tighter continuity than the original with several recurring characters, it was nice that they actually gave it a real ending instead of just suddenly stopping it like what happened with the original Godzilla series. Destroya, or Destroyer, or whatever you want to call him, is also one of Godzilla's most memorable foes, and I'm actually glad he hasn't made another appearance since I think using him again would cheapen his impact. Of course, Godzilla didn't stay dead for long since Toho rebooted the series again with Godzilla 2000 just four years later, which marked the beginning of the Millennium Godzilla series. It just goes to show you can't keep a good monster like Godzilla down for long. So there you go, my last Godzilla video of this particular series. If you count all of them, I'm still only about halfway through. Well, that's all for now. Until next time.